Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the differences between developing for the track versus developing for your road car. I've been invited by TE Connectivity, a company which develops connectivity and sensor solutions, to learn about the automotive technology they employ not only in racing, such as in Formula 1 or Formula E, but also in road cars as well. Starting off, it's important to understand that there are very different goals in mind when developing for a race car versus developing for a road car. A race car, such as in Formula E, is designed to last for one season, while the life of other race cars and motorsports can be even shorter. Your car, however, is obviously designed to last far longer, only requiring maintenance attention every 20,000 miles or so, if that, aside from basic oil changes. Though your car is designed to last a long duration for its intended use, it's important to also realize that it wouldn't hold up to the constant harsh conditions that race cars are subject to on a track. Maintenance on Formula E cars is far higher, with the car coming apart nearly every time they're back in the garage. This of course is a compromise of balancing a lightweight, good handling, compact package, and strength and durability. In Formula E, tracks in Argentina and Hong Kong offer a challenge from a thermal management standpoint, as the ambient temperatures are high, while tracks like Battersea Park in London have extreme bumps offering its own harsh vibration conditions. TE Autosport connectors are a solution created for the racing world, as they can operate up to 175 degrees Celsius and can be unmated and reconnected at least 500 times. By contrast, the average road car connector is rated up to 120 degrees Celsius with a mating cycle of 10 to 15 times, as unmating electrical connections isn't something that should need to occur frequently for road cars. Nearly everything in a race car needs to be able to withstand far more punishment than a passenger vehicle, yet ideally have far less mass. So how do you design for something to last at higher temperatures and many more mating cycles? Most of this comes down to material selection. Automotive connectors will tend to be plastic, with a clip used as a latching mechanism. Auto sport connectors will use more aluminum and use a bayonet-like twist and click mechanism for connections. These can be mated and unmated many times with no negative consequences. On the flip side, a solution the automotive world is starting to embrace that doesn't work quite as well in racing is the switch from copper to aluminum wiring. The length of wire and cable in road cars has increased significantly in the past few decades. In the early 90s, certain models had about 5 meters of wire and cable. Today, similar cars have up to 30 meters. Replacing copper cables with aluminum ones can mean a weight savings of about 40%. In road vehicles which have wiring harnesses running long distances from the front to the back of the vehicle, this can add up to a few kilograms in weight savings. So why isn't the technology as common in racing? The tricky thing about aluminum is that it requires a slightly wider cable to match the performance or voltage drop of a copper wire. This is part of the reason why it's difficult to have a significant bend radius with aluminum wires, making it ideal for long straight paths such as those in road cars, versus short, small radius bends found in race cars. Another challenge with aluminum is called cold creep. When a connector is crimped to an aluminum wire, over time the aluminum relaxes. This means the physical connection is not as strong, even though it will still pass a current. In racing, where suspensions are super stiff and vibrations are very high, these aluminum connections won't have the reliability that copper can offer. Aluminum has been tested in Formula 1 for the weight savings, but copper has been found to be much easier to work with, along with the added reliability. On road cars where comfort plays a much larger role in suspension design and the cars aren't driven at nearly the level of race cars, aluminum can handle the vibrations just fine. Auto sport connectors are also tested to meet military standard 3899, which is a performance benchmark for the aerospace industry for vibration and moisture ingress. In fact, much of the auto sport range of connectors was designed for the Eurofighter Typhoon jet fighter. As time has passed, racing has demanded that these connectors become smaller and lighter. Now the reverse occasionally happens as connectors developed for a racing environment find their way back into the aerospace industry. One example is the ASDD 9-way sensor connector originally designed for F1 gearbox connections which can now be found in many flight entertainment systems in commercial aircraft. While the automotive industry continues to evolve, TE is working towards solutions which are desirable regardless of where this industry is headed. As cars become greener, more efficient, and autonomous, there's a need for sensors, wiring, and connectors to be smaller, lighter, and of course maintain reliability for the life of the product. For more information about TE Connectivity and the solutions they offer, check out the link in the video description, and a huge thanks to TE for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.